because the bovine omentum is much more complex than the equine or the canine, we're going to spend a little bit of time here looking at it. Okay, so if we look at an image where they've taken the ruminant stomach and kind of stretched it out, so we can trace now from the esophagus the rumen here, there's we have a left and a right longitudinal groove of the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and then the true stomach, the abomasum. Okay, so we're going to see that the lesser omentum is going to be running along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Then we have the greater omentum as you see running in those right and left longitudinal grooves and then coursing along the greater curvature of the abomasum. Okay, so now I want to make a comment here about the development of the omentum, the greater and lesser omentum. Okay, so the foregut has both a dorsal and a ventral mesenteric attachment, unlike the rest of the gut which only has a dorsal mesenteric attachment. Okay, so we call these the dorsal and ventral mesogastrium. As it develops, the ventral mesogastrium rotates to the right, becoming associated with the lesser curvature of the stomach, and the dorsal one as it rotates to the left becomes associated with the greater curvature of the stomach as well as the proximal duodenum. Okay, the spleen is going to develop in the dorsal mesogastrium. And the liver is going to develop in that ventral mesogastrium. As that liver expands, it's going to obliterate that portion of the dorsal mesogastrium between it and the body wall. The re remaining portion becomes the lesser omentum. The dorsal mesogastrium is what becomes the greater omentum. So the greater omentum is going to be closed along its edge so that it becomes a sac. Eventually that caudal edge of the lesser omentum, which is found at the beginning of the duodenum, becomes an opening known as the epipoet foramen. Okay, this opening is the entrance into what is sometimes referred as to the lesser sac, but we know it as the omental bursa. Okay, that only has that one opening through the epiploic foramen to gain access to it. Okay. Looking on an actual specimen here, we can see the left longitudinal groove of the rumen, and running within that left longitudinal groove is the superficial leaf of the greater omentum. And we turn it around, we're looking now at the caudal aspect here. Here's the left longitudinal groove once again with the superficial leaf. And over here, the right longitudinal groove, we're going to find the deep leaf of the greater omentum there. Okay, the space above the two leaves of the omentum, the superficial and the deep leaf, because it's above the omentum, it is a supraomental recess. I'll show you another image of that in a bit. And of course, then we have between the superficial leaf and the deep leaf, we have the omental bursa. So in our other species where there was nothing within the omental bursa, we see here that the ventral sac of the rumen is within the omental bursa of the ruminant stomach. Okay, so here's an image looking at the right side. There's the liver. Find a real thin line here, the falciform ligament. Not always well visible, but sometimes it is. Remember the falciform ligament always separates the left lobes of the liver from the quadrate lobe. And the gallbladder is going to separate the quadrate lobe from the right lobes. Okay, so in the bovine we see that the lobes aren't really distinct but we do have some landmarks that help us distinguish where our lobes are. And back here we have the caudate lobe. We can see the caudate process of that there. 
adjacent to that caudate lobe, we find the right kidney. So most of the liver, as you see here, has been shifted so the left side is more ventral, the right side is more dorsal, and because of the rumen taking up the most of the left side of the abdomen, our liver is pushed over to the right. Okay, so here is our abomasum. Coming off the lesser curvature is the lesser omentum. It's going to be attaching to the liver, and I'll show you in an image later on that it is covering over the omasum. Here we have the descending duodenum with the mesoduodenum above and the greater omentum below. If we were to cut through that superficial leaf, we would enter into the omental bursa and see the deep leaf. Here we can see a little bit of cecum, a little bit of jejunum. And there's the descending colon. So most of this viscera is on the right side because the rumen is taking up the left side. Now here's an actual specimen. Here's the liver. Left lobe here. There's the gallbladder. There's our quadrate lobe. The falciform ligament's not real distinct on this one. Here's the right lobe and the caudate lobe. Down here we see the abomasum. The abomasum is mostly on the ventral body wall and then its pylorus comes up to the right side caudal to the omasum. Here we can see the lesser omentum which covers over the omasum. Here we can see our descending duodenum with the mesoduodenum above and our greater omentum below. Okay, in this illustration now, we have removed the viscera from the omental recess. Just ventral to the caudate lobe of the liver, if we reflect that up, between it and the pancreas and the mesoduodenum, we enter into the omental bursa via the epiploic foramen. Okay, so that space above the omentum, I like to remember that all the other viscera are sitting in this space above the omentum and they're playing, so that's where they have recess, super omental recess. In these images here, it shows once again the liver, the omasum, there's our descending duodenum, the superficial leaf of the greater omentum, and then here we reflected that. We've we grab that caudal border and pulled it forward. And when you're doing abdominal surgery in the bovine, you don't want to cut the omentum. You want to be gentle in your handling of it because it could very easily create adhesions. And so here's the viscera in the supraomental recess. Okay, I threw this image in here to show there's the esophagus and the rumen. We can now see the reticulum. Notice that the reticulum is going to be up against the diaphragm on the left side of the animal, so it's going to be just opposite of the heart. If we have hardware disease and we have a nail or something penetrate through the reticulum, we can get a traumatic reticulopericarditis where we get a pericardial infection. Often at necropsy, you will run your hand between the reticulum and the diaphragm and there may be a number of adhesions there and it just may be incidental findings. These guys are pretty tough when it comes to peritonitis. Okay, so here we are now looking at the left side. We see the left longitudinal groove and therefore the superficial leaf of the greater omentum. Okay, if we look at the caudal view of this structure here, over here is our left longitudinal groove and our right longitudinal groove here. If we insert a sheet to create the greater omentum, we get something that looks like this. So our superficial leaf 
is attaching to that left longitudinal groove. We have our caudal fold and then our deep leaf is attaching to the right longitudinal groove. So our superficial is here and our deep is here and those are both attaching to the meso -duodenum. And here we have our supraomental recess above them. Okay, in a similar illustration, we can see here the dorsal sac of the rumen, the ventral sac of the rumen, our left and our right longitudinal grooves. Over here we find our descending duodenum suspended by the mesoduodenum. And here we see our deep and our superficial leaves of the greater omentum. So between those is the omental bursa. And so that ventral sac of the rumen is within that omental bursa, unlike the dog and the horse, which has nothing in that bursa. And here's our supraomental recess. It's very important to know what structures you will find in a paralumbar incision. On the bovine you see here, from a left paralumbar incision, you're going to encounter the dorsal sac of the rumen. The dorsal caudal blind sac is going to be more into the pelvic cavity. And then on the right side, you are going to encounter the descending duodenum the mesoduodenum above it, and the superficial leaf of the greater omentum ventral to it. Thank you for your time.